This week, Shopify announced its staff will work from home indefinitely. The tech company's CEO said their office will stay closed until 2021, even after the pandemic ends. And they're not the only ones. Facebook and Twitter also unveiled similar work from home plans. And we conducted a poll on Twitter and 61% of you said you liked working from home. And that could mean a lot more of this. <laughs> Tony, I can see you here. We can all there. see you. Uh, <laughs> online meeting fails and other embarrassing moments that can only happen when you work from home. That's bad enough. But what if your boss could always see what you're doing? The working from home migration. Well, it's fueling a new brand of spyware that gives managers new powers to prowl, whether it's watching you log on to Facebook, yell at your kids who are also working from home. It's being called tattleware. And unless you're unionized, it's all legal. There's nothing you can do about it except get a new job. At any time, you can log into the dashboard and view screenshots, apps and URLs used, and see who's working. Hubstaff is one of the companies selling this brand of tech. The software allows employers to track your mouse, your keyboard, and take screenshots of your desktop. Your boss could even monitor your physical location via GPS, so do not step away from the computer. So much for the idea you now have the freedom to make your own schedule. So is this the future, and will it make us all want to go back to the office? Joining me now from Vancouver is Charles Adler. He's host of Charles Adler Tonight. And from Toronto, Elamin Abdelmahmoud. He's the BuzzFeed News curation editor and host, co-host of the CBC podcast, Party Line. So Elamin, you've worked from home like forever. Um, and now there's this idea that, I mean, you're such a slacker that you need to be monitored all the time. What do you think? I mean, that's the exact opposite of what actually happens in reality. Study after study ends up proving that People who work from home end up actually having worse work-life balance because, well, your work is just right there. You can just step up, step up to the computer whenever you want. So as a result, you actually end up pouring more of your life and more of your time into work um, than you would if you were going to work and then leaving work at work and then coming home. So there's just, you know, the, the idea that you need to monitor people a little bit extra because they're working from home um, really doesn't speak to the reality of what, what actually goes on when people do work from home. Charles, you've been at this a little while. What do you think? I mean, millennials have this reputation. Is, is it deserved? Do they need to be monitored? <laughs> I always have to be polite uh, to people who are, are vintage uh, windy because uh, they insist on calling in uh, to tell me how uh, lazy millennials are. Now, of course, they're not talking about their kids. Their kids are wonderful, but all the other millennials are. And while they're saying this, I've got millennials and Gen Z people buzzing around me doing far more work than I ever did when I was, you know, their vintage. So, no, I think that that's, uh, that's crazy. Uh, the idea of monitoring, I mean, I, I realize that some, you know, insecure managers may want to micromanage uh, their people and monitor them and get a little insecure if they're away. But I think you can always tell by the outcomes of what people are doing, what it is that they are doing and whether or not what they're doing is useful. The idea of micromonitoring them is something that's abhorrent to me, uh, not just from a, uh, an ethical perspective, but um, I just, my, my gut response to that is, please, get real. So, El, I mean, isn't the idea that you're supposed to be, like, attracting talent? Will this actually attract the idea that you might be monitored, spied on while you're at home? I mean, I, I have to imagine, you know, there's, there's this, there's the getting through this. They're getting through the pandemic. Then there's what happens after. And, and if I were looking for a new job um, immediately after the pandemic, when, when people start hiring again, um, the first question that I'm asking a prospective employer is, hey, how did you treat your employees during the pandemic? What did you do for them? How did you protect their rights? Um, and if their answer is, uh, well, we invested heavily into employee monitoring programs, then that's definitely going to turn me off as someone who wants to work for these places. So I can't imagine um, someone who's looking for a job and then finds an employer who has that little trust in people to do the work. Um, I would imagine that's a big turnoff. So, Charles, like me, you probably remember the fax machine. We, we've seen a few <laughs> things go by over the years. I mean, yeah. is, this, is this here to stay, and is it a good thing? I mean, it seems like we do everything on a screen these days. Is it good, bad? What do you think? Well, well Wendy, remember when we probably had people telling us that this uh, 
computer thing will never last. Uh, you know, <laughs> we're going to get back to typewriters. I remember aging boomers uh, telling me that you can only be creative on a typewriter. You can't be creative on a, on the keyboard of a computer. Anyway, there was all kinds of hogwash being told about how everything was just a fad. Well, it's not a fad, and uh, we're going through massive disruption right now. And in terms of our lives, whenever there was massive disruption, the disruptor usually lasted. So I think we're better off, whether we like it or not, counting on this disruption lasting as opposed to just being eviscerated. Honestly, when I think about that, I think about the timing of, of what just happened with Shopify. So um, on May 8th, Shopify became Canada's most valuable company, bigger than uh, Royal Bank of Canada. That's pretty significant. But then, you know, we're now sitting at May, you know, May 24th, um, and Shopify says they're going to become uh, a mostly digital company. Um, that definitely, to me, hints that, like, that this is a thing that's going to be around just for the future of work. So, I mean, Charles, it, it sounds great. You know, all this flexibility. If you've got kids and you want to watch your kids while you're at home, that's great. But, I mean, companies can save a lot of money. They don't have to have, like, the pool tables and the fancy offices and the special vacation <laughs> plans anymore. I mean, yeah, this is in yeah. their interest, too. Like, what's going to happen to all the middle managers? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, co companies may decide that not only don't they need offices, but uh, and I, I know that some middle managers are freaking out right now, but I think they might decide they might not need all the middle managers they have. But certainly when you're talking about saving money, anyone watching this, Wendy, who's living in a, a major metro, uh, you know, Vancouver, uh, Toronto, Montreal, and some other places, they're going, wait a minute, I'm spending uh, half an hour, hour uh, going back and forth uh, to work. If I don't have to do that, that's a heck of a perk and I'll save some money on gas and, and some other things. Well, I mean, I mean, there's good news, too. It does provide more flexibility. You've got a young family. It makes life easier for you in, in many ways, doesn't it? I mean, it does um, up to a point. You know, like my daughter's three years old. Um, and if, if, if my wife is on a conference call or if I'm on a call myself, um, and like someone else has to sort of drop their work uh, in order to um, manage that because, you know, she can't interrupt, for example, interviews like this one. Um, we've heard tons of stories um, from people who say, hey, my manager expects me to be on video call all the time. Um, and I just don't want to do that because I just don't feel comfortable doing that. So the workplace norms are, are obviously adjusting. I mean, it's been, what, two months. <laughs> um, so we don't know yet where they're going to settle. Um, but uh when workplace cultures usually shift, they rarely shift in favor of the employee. Um, so workers are going to have to figure out a way to advocate for themselves in terms of their privacy, in terms of their space, and in terms of like their expectations. What is going to be expected of them that's reasonable? So, Charles, I mean, we're in COVID now, COVID-19. The economy is not doing so great. People are going to want jobs. Are we? Will people be so desperate for work that they'll put up with this, of being spied on by, uh, by their bosses? Look, uh, we, we know that uh, one of the reasons the uh, stock markets sometimes do well in periods where there is high unemployment is because uh, people invest in the stock market like the idea that uh, wages will be kept down. Nothing keeps wages down more uh, than people desperate to work. And so we can uh, have the luxury of discussing right now what it is that's comfy or not comfy for employees. But the least comfy thing in the world is unemployment, joblessness. If someone is desperate for a job, I think they'll put up with a whole lot of nonsense that in the abstract, they'd say, wait, wait, I'm, I'm not going to put up with that. Well, we'll find out. Uh, we'll find out what you put up with, depending on what your needs are. Well, it's nice to see you all at home. Um, been great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you, Wendy.